Today's episode of the Believe It Steelers podcast is brought to you by betonline.ag. Thanksgiving is come and gone, but week 12 of the NFL is here, Ike. If you want to place a bet on the NFL action, Bet Online is the place to do it. Always the place to be, and that's Bet Online. Make sure y'all bet that the Pittsburgh Steelers will beat the Bengals at Bet Online. And Ike, I know you've had plenty of turkey and gumbo and Thanksgiving fixings, but if you, again, betonline.ag is the place to go. Head to the new and updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus with our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V to receive your bonus. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. All right, cue the music. It's time to start the show. Welcome to another edition of the Believe in Steelers podcast on the Believe Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mark Bergen, joined as always by my guy, two-time Super Bowl champion and 12-year veteran of the Pittsburgh Steelers, number 24, Ike Taylor. IT recording this on Wednesday. This episode will be out on Friday. So full transparency, we're recording this the day before Thanksgiving, but I know your family's getting into town. How are you doing this morning, my man? Man, I'm doing good. How you doing, Mark? Family, uh, mom and Niece here and nephew here, everybody else driving, some flying. So I'm going to have 15 people in a three-bedroom. <laughs> it's a packed house, and I'm sure you'll have plenty of food in the Taylor household. Yes, like I'm yes. traveling later today, so I'm going to okay. knock this pot out, and then later today I'll be on the go to Kansas City to see my family. But love this time of year because we're getting into the thick of things Weather's starting to take a turn, and it's getting colder out. And Week 12 features a matchup between the Steelers and the Bengals, Ike. Bengals four-and-a-half-point favorite, a key right. division game race. The AFC North is tight right now. And I'm looking for the Steelers to get a bit of redemption considering earlier this season the Bengals took it to the Steelers. Yeah, I'm looking for redemption as well. Uh, just looking at another AFC loss against the L.A. Chargers, you know, that's going to hurt. But at the same time, they get to bounce back the following week, which is this week, against the Cincinnati Bengals, an AFC North Division uh, component. So I'm just looking at a man to bounce back, man. I think the Pittsburgh Steelers, they're going to make a push. It's going to be a tough push, but I think they're going to push. I think they're going to do opposite what they did last year, and that was losing like the last five out of six. But this year, I think they're just going to make a strong push to get at least in that seventh seed. Now they've got 17 games. And the Steelers get some reinforcements back. T.J. Watt is due back, Minka Fitzpatrick, Joe Hayden, and Isaiah Loudermilk all set to return this week for the Steelers. So reinforcements are on the way, right. Ike. And it's like we saw how depleted this defense was a week right. ago on Sunday Night Football against the Chargers. The one silver lining of that is a lot of those young players now have game reps. So Correct. when they get their opportunities moving forward, they will have had had that experience. But Ike, I'm not going to lie to you. Watching some of that game back and watching some of the film, I was kind of scratching uh -huh. my head a little bit. And I'm like, this is, you know, an NFL regular season game. It looked a lot like a preseason game because there were a lot of young players who I just didn't know who they were because they hadn't gotten game reps to that point. Yeah, on the defensive side, of course, you know, but um, that's good. The offense came out and they put up points when they needed to. But like you said earlier, Mark, at the same time, you got a lot of young guys with unfamiliar names, but they're getting a lot of reps. So that's what you got to understand as a coach. When you say the next man up, and Coach T really understands and he really believes in that next man up situation, uh, you really can't next man up when it comes down to the quarterback situation. That's tough. That's tough to say. Next man up, but at the same time, you got a lot of young guys getting a lot of reps getting a lot of game reps, getting a lot of game situational reps, you know what I'm saying? So they they coming in in some tense, uh, hostile environments, especially on the road, an uh, AFC team. But, yeah, they came up with the loss. But at the same time, man, I know as a coaching staff, Coach T is proud of his guys, especially the young guys who usually don't get in the game for that long, long period of time. And I want to say this, too. I, I saw that Eric Ebron on his touchdown – got injured and he's in a contract season two, considering the play of Pat Fryermuth this season. Right. 
I, I think we if he's getting a second opinion, so we'll see if surgery is the route that they're going right. to go. The latest report that we have, I can again, we're recording this on Wednesday. This could change by the time our listeners and viewers hear this, but it looks like surgery is the option he's going. If that's the case, I can't imagine he'll be back in a Steelers uniform beyond this season, but Friar Muth played really well in his rookie year. Yeah. Deck Gentry's yeah. been good. Kevin Rader now yes. on the 53 yeah. man roster at the tight end position. Ray Ray McLeod is also going to be out on the reserve COVID-19 list too. So you know the receiver position specifically Ike was a position of depth for the Steelers coming into the year. Right. Obviously Juju's out for the rest of the year with his shoulder injury, Chase Claypool now getting back into the mix. He had a toe injury. I, one guy I want to make sure we give kudos to is Deontay Johnson. Yes. And they featured him on Sunday night football, yes. catching the tennis balls. Keep up with that because he only has one drop this season, 12.1 right. yards per catch. That's a career high. Six and a half catches a game, that's a career high. Nearly 80 yards per game receiving, right. also a career high. Keep it going, Deontay Johnson. There's a reason why you're the Batman of this receiver group. I got to give kudos where kudos is due. Yeah, Deontay just electric. He's just something different when he comes. You know how, you know how somebody just, when they walk into a room, they're very exciting. They're very electric. They have a certain vibe about them. That's Deontay for this. That's Deontay for this Pittsburgh still offense. When Deontay is on the field, you always feel like you got a big play in the making. You know, when he's off the field, and we talked about this last year, even against the Buffalo games, when he did have his drops, when he was off the field, man, it just felt like a normal kind of offense. When he got back on the field, you instantly saw that pop in the offense, and that's coming from Deontay. Deontay worked hard in in, in catching this offseason, and he still continued to do what he needs to do. I think people don't understand. Devontae Adams, at one point in time, he was down on himself early in his career because he used to drop a lot of balls. And now we see what Devontae Adams is. The same with, De with Deontay Johnson. He's the same person, man. It's just he worked hard in the offseason. So you like them stories. You understand you're going to have a down year. Right now, how do I do as a professional to get back? And what do I need to do? And Deontay in the offseason, until this point today, he's still working. And it's still in his mindset. He don't want to have the year he had last year. And he's not. He's been balling. And you want to talk about, I'm glad you mentioned him, Mark. You want to talk about a guy who has been consistent on that football team. It has been Deontay Johnson. I hope there are no more receiver injuries, Ike, because right. <laughs> I'm looking, it's like, James Washington, like this is your time to shine. You Correct. are also in a contract season. So whether it's for the Steelers, beyond this season, or one of the other 31 teams, Ike, you tell me all the time, Correct. your tape is your resume. And I've been yes. a little bit frustrated because in previous weeks, Ray Ray McLeod has gotten more offensive snaps than Washington. Now, that's not been every week, but we've seen that in previous weeks. And I've wanted to see right. Ray Ray McLeod be able to focus and hone in on his return man responsibilities. That is a question that I have for the Steelers this week is with McLeod out, who takes over that punt returner and kick returner role? Something where it's like McLeod always seems to be just like, one block away, one missed tackle away from busting it loose, but he's very good in the open field as long as he hangs on to the football. But that that's kind of the questions that I have are, are twofold. Number one, James Washington, this is your time. They're like, the Steelers really don't have anyone else behind you other than Cody right. White, but he's going to play over Cody White. But then number two, with McLeod out, who who fulfills the return man responsibilities for the Steelers? Two things. I think, I I think Deontay... Yeah, I think Deontay uh, fulfills that need when it comes down to the punt return. I think they're going to put Deontay. Um, if they don't put him as a starter, coach would definitely put him as a situational guy, just depending on how the game goes, whether the Pittsburgh Steelers are up or whether the Pittsburgh Steelers need a shorthanded guy who catch the ball. I think Coach T will keep that into, into consideration. Uh, the James Washington situation, man, is kind of tricky. You know, I don't know if it's coming from the front office. I don't know if it's a coaching staff move or not letting James, you know, getting all the playtime he needs because he's in a contract situation and they probably want to sign him back next year. That's that's the business side of football. So you also got to take that into consideration. So it's a lot of frustration. I understand, James, and that could be one of the reasons. Um, they used to say all the time, man, as a coach, that's above my pay grade. Like the decision I had to make, you know, somebody came down from upstairs and told me to make that decision. So I'm kind of wondering, excuse me, with the playtime for James Washington, is that an upstairs decision, if you know what I'm saying, Mark? 
Let me piggyback off that as well, Ike. Juju Smith-Schuster, who we didn't expect to come back for the Steelers this offseason, had signed that right. one-year contract worth $8 million. Steelers' front office might be thinking, if we hamstring – what I mean by hamstring is if we limit the opportunities James Washington has, he won't be worth as much on an open market, and then we, and we can, can bring, bring him, back. him back to fill that yes. void. Very yeah. interesting theory there, Ike. But that is not surprising right. considering the salary you're allocating this year to Juju Smith-Schuster that you very well might not be in the 2022 season. I mentioned Ebron, how I don't expect him to be back Correct. in the Steelers. Uniform. I agree. I would say the same thing about Juju Smith-Schuster. Interesting theory that you have about James Washington and the Steelers front office, Ike. Yeah, that's just the business part I get. Uh, so that's the business that's the business side I look at as well. You know, I try to look at it from a coach's side, a player side, an analyst side, and a GM side. And just and just from the play, and you keep bringing up James Washington name, and consistently he's not playing as much. And the more you talk about it, the more just stuff start rolodexing in my mind. I'm like, okay, this might be an upstairs decision uh, for the offseason for James Washington. And I know it sucks, but that's just the business part of the NFL, Mark. All right, uh, producer Courtney, this is going to be a social breakout video, so turn the camera on with this one. Steelers smoked in week three by the Bengals, 24 to 10. This is the time right now when you're in the thick of things, the division is tight, when you have an opportunity, you have an opportunity to take advantage, get redemption, and propel yourself up in the division standings. And one player I want to see step up, and head coach Mike Tomlin talked about it to media members, is Devin Bush. I understand Devin Bush is working his way back from a knee injury. A lot of it is mental as it is physical coming back from a knee injury. But when I see he's ranked 86th out of 88 qualifying linebackers with the PFF grades, he hasn't played well. Now, part of that as well is with the caveat of you haven't had Stefan to it this year. You haven't had – Oh, I'm blanking here. I help me help help me out. Um, Stefan to it and Tyson Alu Alu. Uh, okay. So those two players have missed time this year. Who help you know control the line of scrimmage and specifically the defensive front seven. This is an opportunity for Devin Bush to step up in this situation. I know a lot of Steelers fans are frustrated, a lot like they were several years ago with Bud Dupree. And once Bud Dupree started to reach contract time, he started to play better right. and better and better once he was trying to get that payday. I'd expect the same thing for Devin Bush on the back half of this season. He's also under contract through the 2022 season. But as he approaches the end of his rookie deal, I'd like to see him play a little bit better. I don't think that the Steelers will or should bench him considering he was a first-round draft pick, and he is the highest pick that the Steelers have had during the Mike Tomlin era with the 10th overall pick. I don't want to see him benched in favor of Robert Splane for that reason. I would just like to see him make the most of his opportunities when he's given them. And again, I am going to give him the benefit of the doubt coming back from an ACL injury a year right, ago. Right, right. So <clears throat> I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to piggyback and I'm going to do the same thing which you just did. I'm going to give Devin Bush the benefit of the doubt of that ACL injury. Um, It's tough. You know, and he, he looks a step slow, you know. And one thing that popped off from 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 Devin Bush when you saw him before he got injured was his speed, um, his ability to cover tight ends, uh, the way he was getting in and out of breaks, the way he was coming down here. I look, I, I look at Devin Bush like an old school linebacker. All he wanted is violence. And, and right now, he for me, from what I see from Devin Bush, he's just always a step slow. And every time he's on the field. And they're in the man-to-man coverage. It seems like they're looking for 55 on a running back. And, and, and that's been the issue. So I can see why they probably want to put Spillane in, um, probably to protect Devin Bush as well as understanding and seeing these past couple of weeks. He, had, he hasn't looked as fast as he once was before his injury. So I just think it takes a year in general. Once you start coming off the ACL injuries, it re- you really need to recover a full year. So I think next year he'll be back to where he need to be right now. His, his body and what he has going on didn't look like what it was before he got injured. And that speed you mentioned too, Ike, he's only five foot eleven as well. So I don't want him taking on, say, an offensive guard who might be much taller and outweigh him by, you know, 50 pounds, maybe 100 pounds in some circumstances. 
So that speed and that ability is part of his game, considering he's only five foot 11 too. There was one clip yeah. I saw that was making its rounds on social media, Ike, where it's like, why doesn't he even get off the block and try to engage the runner? He doesn't. And it's like, I don't even know if he saw the runner considering again, he's not the tallest guy in the world. And again, right. I'm also going to go back to when you're working your way back from an ACL, a lot of times they say it takes a year to where even if you're physically right, right mentally, you've got to be able to adjust with that. Some players are able to do that more quickly than others. And again, especially considering he's under contract through the 2022 season, whether the Steelers pick up his fifth year option in 2023, Ike, is something we will keep our eye on here on the Believe in Steelers podcast. Well, what you did, what you did like about Devin Bush, his violence was his speed and it didn't matter his size. And when you take that away from him, that's how an older De Devin Bush will probably look on how he's playing right now. So I just hope Devin, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. I just hope Devin Bush can get back to the speed he once was because that's exactly what made him violent, Mark. That's what set him apart. Um, that his old school mentality. But now, man, it's like I say, man, he just looks a step slow coming off that ACL injury. Like we will go to the other Week Twelve matchups throughout the NFL before finishing out, like we always do for our Friday shows with the score predictions for whoever the Steelers are matched up against. Right. We're going to go throughout the rest of some of the matchups in week 12 throughout the league, and we're going to start with the Bucks against the Indianapolis Colts. And I got to tell you what, I'm excited to watch this matchup because we're going to get a lot of old school montages of Brady versus Peyton Manning, even though, you know, I know, you know, the Patriots, Colts, the Manning, Brady rivalry. I remember for several years before Brady, you know, ended up winning seven Super Bowl titles, that that was the debate of who's the better quarterback between the two. I'm looking forward to seeing that. I'd imagine in some of the pregame coverage for this game, Bucks are favored by three at home, but wanted to get your take on this matchup. Yeah, I got the Bucks. I think it's going to be a close game. Um, but the reason why I got the Bucks, one, it's at home. Two, they're getting back healthy on defense. They haven't, they haven't been healthy. Uh, for this whole for this whole season, to be honest with you, and they bringing a lot of guys back, starters back on the defense. So I think that's going to help out. Um, I think they will get to Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz has been playing well, and the reason why he's been playing well, his last name is Taylor, his first name is Jonathan, and that's one of the reasons he haven't he haven't had the opportunity to throw the ball or need to throw the ball. And we got to give a big shout out to the Colts offensive line because in order for a guy to be leading the league in Russia. You know, your offensive line got to be kicking a lot of butt, and that's what they're doing. Now, on the defensive side for the for the coach, man, them boys been balling. I think they're probably the most underrated defense right now, but a good defense, what they have going on. I just think it's just too much power for Tom Brady and company, especially when the Tampa Bay Bucks get their defense back going on healthy 100%. You already know, going into the second half of the season, they, they're going to display what they did last year. But I think this will be a close game. But I think they're going to try to make Carson Wentz beat them and they're going to stop the run. So that's why I'm going to take the Tampa Bay Bucks because I hate betting against Tom Brady to go. <laughs> Jonathan Taylor has been outstanding, specifically yes. the last eight weeks of the season. The Colts yes. are six and two in that stretch. He has more than 100 scrimmage yards in each of those eight games and at least one yeah. rushing touchdown in each of those eight games. Matches an NFL record set by LaDainian Tomlinson and right. Lydell Mitchell. So good company there. And I can tell you what, too, Ike, if we see on Monday that the Colts pull off the upset and Jonathan Taylor goes off, which I think would need to right. happen right, right. for the Colts to pull off an upset, you're going to see on Monday, why aren't we talking about Jonathan Taylor for MVP? And what I'd say is it just doesn't happen. Adrian Peterson was the last running With back the last. to win the MVP. Correct. In 2012, Correct. during his 2,000-yard season. But that's not to take away from what Jonathan Taylor's accomplished. But right. mark my words, if we see that, and really this game hinges on the, the Colts' ability to run the football, I'm going to take the Colts at home in this one, Ike, because I think they will be able to run it with Jonathan Taylor. But that's really okay. the key on Sunday okay. is the Bucs okay. shut down Jonathan Taylor. Good luck beating Brady in the Bucs. But if he's able to get going, that that's really the key matchup in this one. But... Mark my words, if the Colts do pull off the upset, even though they are the underdog at home, we're going to see it Monday. Some show is going to be out there asking why Jonathan Taylor isn't in the MVP race. Well, you know, that's kind of floating right now. But you've always been a step ahead anyway. But, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go. What I've learned dealing with you over the past couple of years, you think out all the way outside the box. I thought I thought outside the box, but you all the way outside the box. So 
I'm just going to ride your coattail on this one. We're going to talk about it next week when we when we get to talking about the MVP race on Jonathan Taylor. You're going to send me a screen grab from FS1 or ESPN. I can tell you right now. I tell you right now. All right, let's go to Titans at Patriots. Patriots are six and a half point favorites at home. They've won five games in a row and are atop the AFC East division. Buffalo is running away with it. Buffalo's now lost three out of its last five games. Mac Jones has been rolling, Ike, but the biggest difference for the Patriots this season, I'm going to the defensive side of the football. 10 points per game given up during this five-game winning streak, 12 right. interceptions in just four touchdown passes. Patriots are playing excellent defense. Give me them six and a half points at home against the Titans. Oh, you know, it's Thanksgiving, but Christmas time is right around the corner, and that Grinch, Coach Belichick, always coming up with something, man. Soon as you think you got him down, man, he always bouncing back. You know what I'm saying? So the Patriots, like you say, man, the defense has been balling. So it's getting back to when Tom Brady was there, when he started his first couple of years, had a solid defense. They got interceptions for him, had a nice little running game, had some okay receivers, had some nice tight ends. It's the same situation now in 2021 when it was in 2007, 8, and 9 for Tom Brady and company. Get a man a good defense. Make sure and he knows as a quarterback, Mac Jones, a.k.a. Mac and Cheese, knows that as a quarterback, as long as I don't give the ball up, I will have a chance to win this ball game because the defense will give me the ball back. Now, what people ain't understanding about the Patriots, they got a nice little running game, Mark. They got a quiet, assassin running game that we're not talking about, but soon we will see. So they're playing fo- they're playing playoff football right now on the second half of the season. So I'm going to take the Patriots over the Titans. I don't want to disparage Mac Jones, and I like the nickname. Are we sure it's not Mac and Cheat and not Mac and Cheese, Ike? It's the Patriots we're talking about here. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna let you. You know, you you know, you like to cross the line. He's a cross the line kind of guy. It's mac right. and cheese. All right, I do like the Patriots at home, especially considering Derrick Henry not playing, Julio Jones out. It's unclear whether AJ Brown will play with the rib injury. Ryan Tannehill coming off a four interception performance, and I like right. what the Titans have done with Mike Vrabel. They've been a great story this year. In the big picture, though, without Derrick Henry in the backfield, I think that hamstrings them from a big picture standpoint to legitimately contend for a Super Bowl. And considering how hot the Patriots are, I like the Patriots at home as well. Let's go to Rams and Packers. Packers are one point favorites at home, but the Rams three and one during Sean McVay's tenure coming off a bye week as well. Packers coming off a loss against the Minnesota Vikings in week 11. Rams have lost two in a row, Ike, but who do you like in this matchup between two NFC contenders? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go out and take the Packers. Um, I like what they have. They have a playoff formula, and the playoff formula is here we go again from 2009. Aaron Rodgers got a good defense like he had against us in the 2009 season. He didn't have the running game what he have now in the 2009 season. He has a running back, a two-back system now, we're in the running game, and now he has a, a few receivers other than Devontae Adams that he, that he can throw to. So Aaron Rodgers is sitting real comfortable right now, whether you're looking from a defensive side or whether you're looking for a running game. We already know what the man can do passing. We call him AR-12 for a reason because the man just got a nice little arm. He's pinpoint accurate. So I'm going to take the I'm gonna take the Packers on this one versus the Rams. The Rams been, like, too inconsistent. They've been up and down. And I want to see Matthew Stafford be a truck. He has all the truck potential. I just want to see him be a truck because he got everything he needs at his disposal, just like an Aaron Rodgers. But I'm going to go ahead and take the Packers this week. I'm going to take the Packers as well. I can, for the sake of the show, I don't always like agreeing with you because we have a better conversation if not. But right, at right. home in Lambeau Field, and the Rams have all this pizzazz with OBJ and Von Miller and everything, and it's like, all right, it's time to show up. And if you're going to do that, do that. Sunday in Green Bay, but the Rams, an indoor stadium team, an L.A. team, having to go into Lambeau Field. I'm looking forward to one of these Sundays, Ike, where Lambeau Field is just covered in snow throughout the whole game, and you get that home field advantage if you're the Green Bay Packers against a team out in L.A. with the Rams that isn't accustomed to the elements and, and the weather. I don't know if that'll be this week. I have not looked at the forecast. We're still several days out, but I know that that is a huge advantage that the Packers have it. Well, considering they'll be at home as well, I'm going to take 
Green Bay as well. Gotcha. Gotcha. Even though you want, you don't want to agree with me on a lot of things, man, I appreciate you agreeing with me with the Packers. Well, I, I will say this. We know about your psychic abilities too. So if I fade you as well, <laughs> more often than not, I'm not going to be right. Last matchup gotcha. I want to preview before we get to Steelers and Bengals is another AFC North matchup between the Browns and the Ravens. Ravens at home favored by three and a half points at home. And remember, last year's primetime game on Monday Night Football between these two games was the Lamar Jackson poop game, a classic Monday Night Football yes. matchup. Yes. But I tell you what, Cleveland Browns, uh, the Cleveland Browns and Baker Mayfield have a problem right now. Mayfield skipped his media availability after the game, talks to media members on Monday and says, oh, I don't need to speak with you guys. I just owe that to my team when that is a direct violation of the NFL's media policy, claims that he doesn't care that fans are booing him. Don't go after a fan base that's had as much turmoil as the Cleveland Browns have had, Ike. And this, again, this comes with the caveat that Mayfield's got shoulder injuries, knee injuries, foot injuries that he's playing through. But what I can say is this, without a doubt in my mind, he has cost himself a lot of money this season because you look at the other two draft picks in the 2018 draft. Lamar Jackson, who he's going to be going against in Ballin. this game. Yep. And then you see the Buffalo Bills giving Josh Allen a contract where he's Ballin. due $43 right. million dollars through the 2028 season. You can imagine Mayfield and Jackson are going to want a similar yearly figure. But what I can tell you is the way that Mayfield has played – Injuries or not, when he's been on the field, he's been nowhere near that level. You used the word ball and Ike, spot on with how both Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson have played. Just given the turmoil with the Browns right now, I'm taking the Ravens at home, minus three and a half. So this is what we're going to disagree at. I'm going to go ahead and take the Cleveland Browns. Whoa. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take the Cleveland Browns. Uh, Lamar hasn't been playing for a couple of weeks. He's been sick. I don't know what kind of sick that is, but I don't want that sick. He's been sick for the past, you know, couple of weeks. Uh, I think I think even though they won and they won ugly, the Cleveland Browns I'm talking about, I think Baker Mayfield is going to bounce back. I think Baker Mayfield, that's one thing he will never, ha will never miss, and that's swag. So he's right to a certain degree. When he said he he has nothing to prove to nobody but his teammates, but at the same time, you just got to be professional about it. You got to understand what comes with the territory, win or lose. So that's what Baker Mayfield got to understand, and he should know better. But coming into this game, man, the Browns got a nice defense. I know we've talked about the Baltimore Ravens defense, but we have seen the Baltimore Ravens defense get scorched a few times this year. So I'm going to go with the Cleveland Browns and their defense. I'm going to go with the Cleveland Browns and their running game. Baker will have an okay game, and he won't have any turnovers. Lamar Jackson, if he does play, he's coming back, and I think he will be rusty. So I'm going to take the Cleveland Browns. In my show notes, Ike, I have stopped the Browns running game, and you will win. One thing in your favor, and I will concede this, the Browns are due to get back Kareem Hunt and all-pro right tackle Jack Conklin as well to get that running game going. You stop the Browns running game. The passing game has had struggles, and again, a lot of that is attributed to Mayfield is playing through injuries. If you're Kevin right. Stefanski and that head coaching staff in the front office, at what point is whatever percentage health Mayfield's at, 75%, 70%, I don't know, right. would Case Keenum be a better option to actually yeah, so win over Baker Mayfield? Yeah, sometimes you got to police the player as a coach. So sometimes you just got to sit them, you got to understand, look, if I want you for the future and you all banged up, this is not going to do us any good. So s somebody might just have to come in and tell Baker, coach might have to just tell him, like, if he has a bad game against the Baltimore Ravens, because he's injured like Baker, we're going to have to sit you down. And we're not sitting you down because of the play. We're sitting you down because we want you for the future. So it, it depends on this Raven game, this Raven game, and see what happens with Baker Mayfield. But if he doesn't play good, I think they will pull him, and they won't pull him because of his play. I think they'll pull him because of his injuries. I'm 100% with you there, Ike. And that's why I found his commentary on Monday a little bit troubling, considering I think that most people would understand that he's nowhere near 100% health Correct. right now, which, again, Correct. impacts his ability to play and, from a big-picture standpoint, is impacting what he could make on the contract extension that he Correct. sees. 
Correct. Right now, Baker's just gambling with himself. And I can't knock a player because we've been like that. We've been playing injured our whole life when it came down to playing football. So for Baker Mayfield, man, he's just gambling. He's betting on himself. And I'm not mad at him. It's just if they think he's the future, sometimes you have to police the player because he, he can go to he's he can go to his whole body falls apart. And that's what you don't want from your franchise quarterback if you think he is your franchise quarterback going into the next season. But Baker, he, he's stuck in a pickle because he also he also wants that big contract and he wants to perform right. But right now I think he's just pushing it and he's pushing it way too far. He's pushing his body too far and he's not helping his team out the way he the way he could. I'm with you there, Ike. Okay. Steelers at Bengals, week 12. Ike, Bengals favored by four and a half. What's your pick on Sunday? 21-17 to Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, I think that loss against the L.A. Chargers rejuvenated Pittsburgh, got them to un- <clears throat> excuse me, got them to understand and believe that they can come back, um, even though they didn't win. Coming back from what the seventeen point deficit, uh, you looking at the stat? I think it hasn't happened in the fourth quarter. It's zero in two hundred and fifty four, right? Fifty four times, right? Two, that, two, that oh, and 231 when the Steelers oh, are in the fourth quarter, in the fourth quarter, trailing by 17 by plus points. Yes, sir. And they almost came back. So they almost had hope. It was just one play, a missed assignment that gave the LA Chargers like on that deep ball to Mike Williams. But at the same time, I think out of this loss, out of the hustle play, and we displayed that this morning from Cam Hey, well, out of that hustle, out of that hustle play, I think Coach Tomlin, you know, put that up on the board as a bright spot for not only the team, but for the Pittsburgh Steelers, seeing Cam go down 40 to 50 yards and hustling that play. And that's just what it is being a Pittsburgh Steelers. So I think now the Pittsburgh Steelers, they bounce back good off this off that loss between the L.A. Chargers. 21-17, I got the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Ike, that chase down tackle of Chargers quarterback Justin Herbert of Cameron Hayward was part of our Taylor Talk segment on Monday's Correct. episode of the Believe It Steelers podcast. I would encourage our viewers to go back and watch your play breakdown of just an incredible effort by Hayward. Yes. For Sunday though, I've got the Steelers winning 31 to 23. I think this is going to be the Steelers most impressive win of the season. It's okay. all on the line. You're getting a lot of key players back. TJ Watt, Minka Fitzpatrick, Joe Hayden. Let's roll. I'm ready to go. Ike and Ooh. coming off Thanksgiving AFC North matchup. I think this will be Pittsburgh's biggest win of the year. And you slammed your hand down on the desk. I know you meant it. You almost got me fired up, too, so I'm rocking with you. I love it, Ike. Um, again, want to wish our viewers a very happy sure. Thanksgiving as they watch this on Friday and a happy Christmas and holiday season as well. Keep rocking with us here on the Believe in Steelers podcast. I want to thank the folks at the Believe Podcast Network, our producers over at Brinks TV, led by Courtney Vargas, John Brinkus, Herbert Diaz, and the team over there today's sponsor, betonline.ag. To the, the viewers and the listeners of the Believe in Steelers podcast, thank you for tuning in. And to you, number 24, my guy, Ike Taylor, Appreciate you it. are the very best. It's awesome thank working you, with you each week. It's all love. So I want to give a future talk. So I want to Hope everybody had a happy Thanksgiving. Hope everybody ate well. Hope everybody gained a lot of pounds. Hope everybody just indulged in a lot of potato pies, sweet potato pies, pecan pies, cakes, and all that good stuff. Turkeys, fried turkeys, uh, gumbo, which I'm about, which I didn't have. So I just want to thank uh, Bet Online. Thank my dog Mark. Thank Miss Courtney and Brinks TV. Thank Believe in Steelers podcast. Thank everybody who tuned in week in and week out. Thanks for giving us the love and support. For Ike Taylor, I'm Mark Berg, and thank you for listening to the Believe in Steelers podcast. We will see you on Monday. Take care, and so long, everybody. Go see